Hey guys and welcome to my Fight Cauldron Guide for 2019. When you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. Now the Fight Cauldron is a combat minigame that's kind of forgotten. It's overshadowed by its larger brother with useful rewards being the Fight Kiln, as both are located in the Tazara Caves. Now while the Fight Kiln requires the Elder Kiln quest, the Fight Cauldron actually requires another quest being the Brink of Extinction, which requires level 80 defense, 80 smithing and 72 mining. Now the minimum requirements are 70 plus combat stats if you want to get decent experience at this combat minigame. However, the higher combat stats you have, the easier it's going to be, and that's why I recommend 90 plus combat stats. Now, the reason I'm making a guide on this combat minigame is because it's actually good experience. However, there are AFK alternatives that do not require as much effort. However, if you're an Iron Man account, this is actually a viable way of getting free and easy herb lore and summoning experience. As throughout the minigame, you can get common experience lamps that you can also put in herb lore, prayer, and summoning, which give 20k experience each. It is also the only way of obtaining the Obsidian Armor Set, which is a hybrid tier 60 armor set. Now this armor set actually reduces the damage you take in the Tazar city and the minigames like the Fight Kiln and Fight Cauldron, making your life much much easier if you're going for the insane final boss title or if you just want to get the best in slot kiln capes because it only takes around 30 to 40 minutes to complete a full set of obsidian armor. That's really fast if you ask me for a lot of damage reduction in the fight kiln. Now the fight cauldron is really just a wave by wave combat minigame and you just want to take the best armor you have with you because it's going to make your life easier. I will say that magic has the priority here and it's definitely the best style to use however tribriding is also a very good option. Now melee is quite difficult because when you guys will see when I will showcase some of the footage of the actual minigame you have to move around a lot and it's very active and annoying to use melee weapons even if you're using something like a scythe with more range. Now as the monsters are poisonable the cinder banes are pretty much the best in slot gloves to use here. Now as you guys can see on screen now this is pretty much the best setup you can have after you've done the fight cauldron for around 30 to 40 minutes to get your obsidian armor. This way you can adapt your combat style or the weapon you're using to the weakness of the monster you're fighting each wave. Now, one thing you want to note about the Fight Call to Minigame is you can bank whenever you want, because you can just pause and stop, because the waves never stop. There's no ending to the actual minigame. So if you want to bank for more food or more potions, you just go out and go back in and just start again. It doesn't matter, you don't lose any progress whatsoever. If you have a charged Tokozo, you can easily teleport to the Fight Cauldron minigame. If not, you'll have to go to the Tazara city manually by going to Port Sarim, going to Karamja, entering the entrance at the volcano, and then following the video as seen. Skip ahead in the video if you already know how to get there. To start, go inside the entrance. There's actually a bank located right there. Then go east and go through the portal to start the Fight Cauldron minigame. This is very similar to the arenas in the quest actually. Once in, the waves will actually start. Now it's really slow for some reason. The spawn rate or the time between waves is just way too long. It could be much faster experience per hour than 500 to 600k experience per hour if the wave spawns were just faster, but it is what it is. Now the actual minigame itself is really simple. All you have to do is kill the monsters each wave, but sometimes the plates, there's 9 in total, start glowing. Now when these plates start glowing you want to move away from them immediately and with melee this is very annoying as you have to get into range to kill certain monsters. If you do not you will get damage per tick and it's very high damage so you're going to be munching through your food very fast. I must note this is a great way of training for hardcore Iron Man as well because it's a safe death much like the fight kiln and fight cauldron. The only thing you'll lose on death is half of your obsidian charge you would have gotten if you left the arena alive. If you leave the actual gate of the arena, you will receive your obsidian shards. Each wave you'll obtain a few shards depending on which type of monster you've killed. These monsters also drop some noted stuff, some stone spirits, but really you won't be making any money here whatsoever. 
However, if you're an Iron Man, the noted gems could come in handy if you want some extra crafting experience, but it really isn't that much. Now, there's only one way of obtaining those experience lamps that give you 20k experience, which you can put in any combat skill, including Herblore and Summoning. Now, these are actually obtained if you defeat a Tokhar Hawk, and then they are dropped on the floor, so be sure to pick those up. Now, the Tokhar Hawk is actually a kind of mini-boss or champion, which spawns randomly, and if you can get a few per hour, maybe even five, you can get a decent Herblore experience rate per hour as an Iron Man without gathering any supplies whatsoever because it's an experience lamp. Now, the one you're seeing on screen is actually my first one I encountered after around 20 minutes, and they are actually quite tricky. I don't know, it's kind of struggling even with my gear, which is pretty high tier. So I was quite surprised by the toughness of this actual mob. You can probably kill it really fast if you're using Onslaught or something. However, of course, not everyone is going to be having access to that. Uh, now, this champion or Tokar Hawk actually spawns minions or other monsters during the wave as well. Now, one thing I did not know at first is the Tokar Hawk actually has mechanics. At around half HP or health, he tries to heal himself at the lava fountain. Now what you want to do at that point is use a stun ability so that he cannot get to the lava fountain or stun him while he's standing in it. Otherwise the Tokar Hawk will heal 5k life points per tick, which is just, you can't out DPS that. And another thing he sometimes does throughout the fight is teleport you into the lava fountain and then you'll take tick damage much like the glowing plates. So yeah, the first thing you want to do is surge out of that or move out of it and you should be fine. And other than that, the minigame is pretty straightforward. Just one more thing you guys may want to know is you can actually get an achievement by using the Obsidian Armor and killing a Tokar Hawk. And you can actually boost your damage by 10% in the Fight Cauldron by paying or using your Tokol on the little rock thingy at the entrance. And other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide and found it helpful. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.